I'll say that again. To do the work of God is not just to preach and to teach, but it's also to experience what God has determined that you should experience. And you should experience it voluntarily. This is why many ministers don't go too far. Because to preach and to teach, honestly, you need to be barely saved to be able to preach and to teach. You just have to get out of new convert class. If you are a natural speaker, you find yourself saying things. And before you realize, people will be listening to you. So if it's just preaching and teaching, you get it. There are many people who can do it. But if you would like to divide Jesus' life into three parts, you could divide it into his infancy, his birth and infancy, which we know about, then his childhood, which we know little about. They are what is called the silent years. And then the years of his public ministry and public favor. And then the years of his public opposition until he was crucified. And Jesus experienced a period of public favor where he was acclaimed. And as that season came to a close, another season of hatred and public opposition gradually built up to a climax. Jesus' work was not just to preach and teach. If he had wanted to continue preaching, he would have simply done what he did the first time when opposition reared its ugly head. The first time when Jesus went to his hometown, one of the towns on the Sea of Galilee, Nazareth, where he had been brought up, they were so angry by his message, saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has anointed me, he has called me, and so on. It, it, it greatly irritated the people, and they wanted to kill him. The Bible says, Jesus passing through them, he escaped. They wanted to throw him over the cliff. This was the last time our Jesus went to Nazareth to waste his time there. He just moved to Capernaum and uh, Chorazin and other Bethsaida and other places where they didn't know him from his childhood. And he ministered there successfully. So as the hatred built up from his years of public favor to the years of public opposition, all he needed to do was to travel to Egypt and do some miracles and continue to uh, Syria and to continue to other parts of the world. And he would have successfully evaded the people. You see, a, a past, it's not easy to be a pastor. A pastor is some, you, you, must, you, must, you, must, you must be clever. Because the way people are, they love you, but they want to destroy you. They need you, but they hate you. And so they, they receive from you, but they don't really care for you. And they don't really love you in a certain sense. So if you don't take care, stay with the same people for a long time can destroy you if you don't have the anointing to be a pastor. Not all people have anointing to be a pastor. Some people have an anointing to be an evangelist. So they can stay with you for three days after by the fourth day to a week is getting to the time of uh, departure. <laughs> if you don't go soon, you know, issues will start to come up and they will be annoyed with why did you say this, why do you say that, and so on, and this one, I thought you would do this, and before you realize. So, so a pastor is somebody who is anointed to stay with the same people for a long time and somehow survive. 